Welcome to the How Bulldogs Coaches Show with Bill Jaling. The Coaches Show is brought to you by FBC How. Now let's join Monty Walker with Bulldogs head coach Bill Jaling. Coach, you were hired here back in in February and uh, to replace Zach Hudson, who's now in uh, Class 4A May Bank. Uh, tell us about Bill Jaling and and uh, what do you bring to the table and how'd you get here to How? Okay. Um, I was uh, been the head coach the last two years at Hampshire Finette, which is about 20 miles southeast of uh, Beaumont. Um, reason I made it to How is uh, I believe it's a God thing. Uh, my uh, son has some medical conditions. Uh, spent the first 10 to 12 years of my coaching career in the Fritz- Frisco Richardson area. Um, back in January of last year, my wife uh, found some programs here for uh, my little boy uh, with his autism for uh, in the da- uh, Allen Frisco area. So she was living here in Dallas, and I was still staying in uh, Beaumont. And about a month into the training, she said, uh, "You know, this is where our little boy needs to be." Uh, so I started looking in the Dallas Metroplex area. Uh, How saw the job open at How. I applied. Uh, you know, two weeks later, I had an interview. Three weeks later, I had the job. So. I believe God has an answer for everything, and uh, you know this wasn't about my career and where I was at. It was about my little boy, and I believe God put me here for a reason. That's awesome. Now, a lot of people, when you got hired, the the first thing they stared at was an eight and thirty one record. But there's a lot of circumstances that are that people don't know about when you're dealing with uh, young young men. And talk about some of that. Hey, um, my first uh, coaching job was in Cushing, Texas, which is about twenty miles uh, northeast of Nacogdoches. Um, I've always been that guy hired to rebuild programs. Uh, Cushing, when I took over Cushing, hadn't won a game in two or three years. Um, so it was a rebuilding process there. So the first year, uh, you know, you're just establishing the program, getting the discipline that you want and uh, the routine with the kids. Uh, so we, we struggled our first year. We went one and nine, but the next year, you know, we won four games right out the gate, had a couple injuries that kept us from winning five or six games that year. And, uh, you know, we were moving in the right direction. Uh, when I took the head coaching job at Hampshire Fernet, it was a very similar situation. Uh, program was in shambles. Uh, kids weren't their low numbers in uh, participation in football and everything else. So, again, another rebuilding process. Took the took the first year to establish the program. Second year we got better, and you know I was really excited about year three at Hampshire Fernet. But like I mentioned earlier, uh, God has a plan for all of us, and you know I'm here in um, Powell, Texas now, and I'm excited about it. But a lot of the things that happen when you're reestablishing a program is you got to establish the the discipline and the expectations. And uh, I'm one of those coaches that I'll sacrifice a W to establish uh, the discipline and the, the expectation and that it's uh, it's not about individuals, it's about a team. Uh, so there's been several times in the past, especially one uh, instance where I've uh, sat my best running back for three quarters of a game because he thought he was uh, bigger than the team. And it might have cost me a W, but you know what? That kid was the best kid I coached uh, from that point on, and we set the, the tone right there that it's, you know, big team, uh, little me atmosphere from here on out. Well, when you've uh, when, since you've been here, you've talked an awful lot about all programs and not just football. Uh, you seem to have a, an array of, of all sports. Talk about that. I'm big on all sports. I want our kids to participate in every sport while they're uh, in high school. I believe you go to high school one time, you got four years, let's take advantage of the opportunity. Do everything, and it's just not sports. I mean, it's FFA, student council, band, everything. So I want all our kids to participate in everything. So I'm not here to develop football players. I'm not here to develop basketball players, baseball players. I'm here to develop the best athletes we can develop. So I'm real big on the strength and conditioning program and uh, just increasing our kids' speed, agility, everything. Um, Because it's not about one sport here. We're a small school. So, you know, the 11 kids that are playing football for us or starting on the football team, probably four of them are going to start on the basketball team. Six or seven of them are going to start on the baseball team, and it's the same with volleyball, basketball, softball. So I'm, I'm here to develop our boys and girls into the best athletes they can be, not just for one sport, but for all sports. Coach, you've had a lot of kids come out for football, um, some that I haven't played in a few years. What's the secret? Uh, I don't really know if there's a secret to it. Uh, it's really when I got the job here, it's coming in and establishing not just only the expectation of the program, but establishing those relationships with the kids. And one of the big things that I think got a lot of kids to come back out and play football was that they saw that I just wasn't about football. I was about them. I was about making them the best athlete they can be. And uh, 
you know, they kind of saw that, hey, you know, Coach Jalen's just not here to have football machines or football is the main thing. They He saw that uh, Coach Jalen cares about that I'm going to get better in basketball. I'm going to get better in baseball. Um, and I think because of that, they kind of bought into the program a little bit. And they kind of said, hey, you know, if I'm going to be doing all this work, you know, I might as well play football. I might as well play this other sport and everything else. So I really don't think it's a secret. I think it's just getting the kids to buy into you. And I believe when I got here, I established some really good relationships. I think me stepping out and helping out in baseball last year, the kids really got to know me pretty quick instead of just seeing me for 50 minutes during a period. And then they saw me at track meets. They saw me working with them. Uh, came out and worked with the junior high kids with track last year. And I think that kind of mentality got the kids to buy into the program very well. Talk about the coaching staff you've been able to put together. I think our coaching staff is great. Um, Coach McCormick, who's been with me for five years, um, has came up to me and said, you know, Coach, I believe this is the best staff we've ever had together. And I just believe that we got good people. Uh, you can go out and hire coaches that are the great X's and O guys, great football mind guys, but they, they kind of sometimes bring an ego with them or they kind of don't know how to bring it down to our kids' level sometimes. Um, you know, because you get guys that coach at the 5A and 6A level and then they come down to a small school and it's a totally different atmosphere. You know, you're not getting two hours in a practice to emphasize one side of the ball. we got guys, kids going both ways, so you get them for an hour at most, sometimes even less. And I just believe that the coaching staff we got on, on staff here is uh, good men. They care about the kids. They know that they, uh, they're here for the right reasons. It's not about, like I said, we're going to get, our goal is to get W's, but it's about molding these kids to the best men they can be when they leave here. Uh, good fathers, good husbands. Um, and I think because we hired guys like that, it's created a very good coaching staff. So what would make 2018 a successful year for Coach Jay? Well, you know, we're all competitors by heart. So, you know, number one goal is to get into playoffs. Number two goal is to go as far as we can in the playoffs. Um, I believe a successful season this year we can't be judged on our wins and losses, um, but we are going to be competitive. We're going to get after it every Friday night. Uh, our goal is to to just get these kids to be where they need to be as men. Uh, that's the number one goal. I mean, I believe as a coach, we're mentors for these kids. Uh, so while well, I know everybody looks at the wins and loss records, it's going to be how much did we grow from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Um, doesn't mean that I'm shooting for an 0-10 season to, and everything like that, but no, we are, we are looking to be competitive this year. We're looking to be in the playoffs this year. I believe we can fight for a playoff spot this year, but um, you know, the success of this program is going to be how much have we grown from day one of two days till the end of the season. You've been listening to the How Bulldogs Coaches Show with Bill Taylor, sponsored by FPC Howell.